tonight on News at 9. Bad weather ahead. Med department announces heavy rainfalls of 100 millimeters for the next 24 hours. First at 9. This is Other Therana 24-7. Also making headlines tonight, update on floods, interim report on disaster affected, brief to the Prime Minister. Manusant Derana. Derana Media Network's humanitarian mission gets ready for its second phase to provide necessities for school students. Questionable development. Minister Partley says Southern Expressway lacks proper environmental assessment. And in international headlines, leaving the climate pact. U.S. President Donald Trump stuns the world with his withdrawal from the U.S.-led Paris Climate Agreement. As the country slowly recovers from flash floods and landslides, more rain forecasted in the next 24 hours. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mahesh Johnny, and this is the News at 9 on Other Than 24-7. The Med Department announced today that heavy rainfalls of about 100 millimeters can be expected in the south southwest part of the country. Meanwhile, the latest updates from the Disaster Management Center reveal that the death toll due to the adverse weather conditions has risen to 208. The number of missing persons amounted to 92, while the number of affected is reported as 677,241. This is the state of Pahi Angal Hill following its landslide which claimed 21 lives. <laughs> the Navy took action to clean up the waste accumulated near Naragala Bridge in Bulat Singhala today. Adha Derana reported on the matter yesterday, highlighting how waste accumulation had obstructed flood waters from receding. A house was destroyed in a landslide along the route of Valgama in Bulat Singhala. <laughs> Flood waters receded in Paragoda and Niggaha in Bulat Singhala areas as well. <laughs> Everything's destroyed, including these books and household items. We don't even have a proper place to stay. We're living with our neighbours now. Our team witnessed the effects of Kaluganga overflowing. Houses along the route from Natupana Bridge to Udavara have sustained damages. Four people who had fallen into water were rescued today while a group led by parliamentarian Sunil Harunetti were in a boat distributing relief goods in Uggodamatra. All four victims were rescued by Navy personnel who were deployed to distribute relief goods. Although low-lying areas near the main road of Matra, Hakmana is still submerged, flood waters in the area has mostly receded at present. Affected persons in certain areas are currently living in makeshift tents in Nadugala in Tudava. The other Derna team had the opportunity to engage in an observational tour at the location. Many stores in Tudava have also been damaged by floods. Meanwhile, the National Water Supply and Drainage Board commenced the project to clean wells and other water sources that are used by public in Tihagoda Middallavala Temple in Matra. We would like to confirm that the water supplied by the National Water Supply Board is purified and suitable for consumption. The flood waters in Kalutara currently is also receding. Pakistan Navy personnel were seen engaged in the cleaning process of wells and water sources that are polluted by floods. 
Meanwhile, the Minister of Education has given instruction to reopen a few of the schools which were closed due to the disaster situation in the country. Accordingly, all schools in the western province will be reopened next Monday. In the Sabragama province, 15 schools which were used as displacement camps will be closed while all other schools will be reopened from Monday. Except for 10 schools used as displacement camps and 29 damaged in the disaster, all other schools will reopen on Monday in the southern province. Zonal directors are given the authority to reopen the schools which are being used as displacement camps. An interim report which was compiled under the instructions of Prime Minister Rani Wickremesinghe on the recent landslide and flood situation was presented to the Secretary of the Prime Minister, Saman Ekanayaka, today. The interim report was compiled by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka and the Ministry of National Policies and Economic Affairs in order to allow the government to take necessary steps to assist those who have been affected financially. According to a communique issued by the Prime Minister's office, the Secretary to the Prime Minister Samane Kanayaka provided a summary of the report to the Prime Minister over the phone. Thereafter, the Prime Minister instructed the Secretary to take necessary measures to implement recommendations put forth by the interim report with the allocated budget and hold discussions to obtain funds from international financial institutions. The Department for Registrations of Person states that a special program will be implemented to issue new identity cards for those lost due to adverse weather conditions. A police complaint can be filed regarding the dismissal of the ID cards. On the instruction of the Divisional Secretary and the Grammar Saver Officer, a request can be made to obtain a new identity card. Accordingly, request forms can be obtained through the Grammar Saver Officer. Also in local news, Minister of Finance and Mass Media says we should accept the fact that all the nationalities in this country should have equal rights and everyone should start thinking as Sri Lankans. He made these remarks during the ceremony organized to mark assuming duties at his ministry today. Mangala Samaravira, who was appointed as the Minister of Finance and Mass Media, assumed duties at his ministry today. We fought with each other as nationalities, religions and political parties 69 years ago. Sinhala, Tamil and Muslim extremism sprang in the country. Something which could have been solved easily turned to be a war of 30 years. Some tried to create chaos in the country, such as the Saitam issue. This country needs private universities. After 69 years of independence, we have only 25,000 vacancies in state universities. Meanwhile, Minister of Skills Development and Vocational Training Chandima Virakodi and the Deputy Minister of the Ministry Karuna Ratna Paranavitana also assume duties today. In one of our headline stories, lack of proper environmental assessments in a lot of mega development projects of the country have led to the environmental catastrophes. That is according to the Minister of Megapolis and Western Development, partly Champika Ranavaka. The Minister, Ra uh, Minister Ranavaka made this statement during a media briefing held in Colombo today. We will be facing heavy rain, severe droughts, tsunamis and rising sea levels in the future and are we ready to face this as a country? The most serious environmental issues were caused by the Southern Expressway. This has been built blocking the rivers of Kalani, Kalu, Ging, Nilwala and Valave. We propose that it is better to think twice about building expressways beyond Kurnagala and travel along roads in hilly areas. When the floods come, people are evacuated to the temples, schools and paddy storages. We propose it is necessary to establish permanent safe centres under the administration of security forces. We'll have more local stories right after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back everyone. Discussions were held yesterday under the patronage of President Maithripala Sirisena on the renovation and redevelopment of the historical Mahayangana Raja Mahavihara. The meeting was held at the President's office.
The meeting saw the participation of the chief incumbent of the Mahiyangana Rajamahaviharya, Venerable Urulavate Dhammarakita Thera, secretaries of relevant ministries and government officials. Focus was given on safeguarding the legal right to the premises as a place of worship while ensuring that no private party will be given deeds or licenses within the premises. The President's media unit added that discussions were held on developing the distribution of electricity, improvement of roads and other development work at the sacred grounds. Meanwhile, the President participated in a memorial commemorating the massacre of 30 Buddhist monks in Arantalava at the Arantalava International Buddhist Centre. The President laid flowers at the feet of the monument of the chief incumbent, Venerable Hego de Indra Saratera, who was also victim of the massacre. The President also declared open the Venerable Hagod Indra Saratera Memorial Hall at the Buddhist Centre. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa, who is on a visit to Japan, held discussions with Japan's Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry, Tohishiro Nikai, yesterday. The meeting was held at the Liberal Democratic Party office in Japan. The former president, Mahindra Rajpaksha, who is on a 10-day visit to Japan, met with the secretary of Liberal Democratic Party as well as Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry yesterday. The former president's media unit stated that the Japanese minister had expressed his admiration of Sri Lanka's development process during the post-war period. The minister had also said that he is aware of the difficulties Sri Lanka is facing at the moment. He had then expressed his expectation of the former President Rajapaksha's involvement in leading Sri Lanka to success. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksha's media unit further stated that the Japanese minister had welcomed him not as the former president but as a great leader who brought an end to 30-year-long war in the country. Parliamentarians Lohan Ratwatta, Pial Nishanta and Roshan Ranasinghe accompanied the former president. Manusa Dharana Humanitarian Initiative continued the distribution of goods received last evening at the Dharana head office in Colombo despite the campaign coming to a successful close. Manusa Dharana hopes to launch the second phase of the humanitarian initiative to distribute schooling equipment in the near future. In addition to the collection point at the Dirana head office, relief supplies received by 11 other collection points were distributed among those affected by the disaster. The Golden Society of Dambulla also joined in distribute relief aid in Dambulla, Singhala Goda and Ehelia Goda. Donations collected for Manusat Dirana Humanitarian Initiative by the Chilau District Scouts Association was distributed to Nagoda in Gaul. The Scouts of Chilau collaborated with Manusat Dirana to collect relief items for the affected. The initiative of Manusat Dirana is a success. The Gaul prison also lended a helping hand to Manusat Dirana in distributing relief goods to the affected in the areas of Baddegama. Uddam Mitya and Vadu Valley Vitya North in Gaul. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Sri Lankans living in South Korea has pledged their support for the second stage of the Manusat Dirna Humanitarian Initiative. The officials of the 9th Battalion of Gamunu Watch and the 1st Regiment of the Sri Lanka Armed Corps distributed relief goods to those affected in the Bulat Singhala area. The Government Medical Officers Association, in collaboration with the Manusat Dharana, opened several other medical clinics in areas including Moravaka and Neluva. The European Commission has pledged funds to Sri Lanka as relief aid for the recent natural disaster. China, meanwhile, uh, uh, Meanwhile, a Chinese uh, visiting Navy flotilla also donated relief goods with flights carrying further aid is due in the country. The European Commission said it is allocating Euros 300,000 in humanitarian funding to Sri Lanka to bring emergency assistance to communities in Sri Lanka affected by the recent floods. The EU-funded assistance will focus on the most pressing needs of the affected families in the immediate aftermath of the floods, including access to clean water and sanitation facilities, the provision of essential household items as well as emergency shelter. 
Visiting Chinese Navy flotilla donated 10 rubber dinghies, food, drinking water and medicine to be distributed among disaster-affected people. A handover ceremony was held with the participation of Commander Shen Hua of the Chinese Navy flotilla and Sri Lanka Navy Commander Ravindra Vijay Gunaratna. In addition to the relief supplies, a team of 16 Chinese medical professionals departed to the disaster-affected areas. In the meantime, Chinese chartered flights carrying disaster relief goods will land in Sri Lanka tomorrow. Chinese Ambassador Yi Chien Liang, Minister of Foreign Affairs Ravi Karunanayaka and Minister of Disaster Management Anru Priyadarshanayapa will accept the goods. The GMOA alleges that there is a lack of dextran and other critical drugs in the stock of the Ministry of Health which is needed in order to combat the spread of the dengue epidemic. This was brought to light during a media briefing held in Colombo today. The coordination meeting today chaired by the Dr. Kahandali and again, but unfortunately the coordinating officer of the minister also there. He was the person who took the decisions and it is a really unfortunate situation and we found out that critical drugs are not uh, in enough the stocks of the medical supplies division, mainly the Tamiflu and the Dextran 40, uh, director of the Dengue Control Campaign, very clearly stated that the, the Dextran 40 from the India can't use in the Dengue epidemic because it is disastrous. Patients who got Dextran 40 from India died, but they couldn't find out the real. So the uh, deputy director of the medical supplies division tried his level best to safeguard their decision to bring the Dextran 40 from India. We couldn't find out the, what is the reason for it. We are asking for the Minister of Health to take the necessary steps to bring this Tamiflu and the Dextran 40 from Thailand. Next two weeks is critical uh, with the, this disastrous situation. Most infectious diseases, epidemics. When other than inquired into the effects of Dextran imported from India, the Ministry of Health confirmed that no deaths were reported upon taking the said drug for dengue. Furthermore, the Acting Director General of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sarab Amurugama, revealed that a consignment of 3,000 numbers of Dextran will be imported from Thailand and will reach the island next week. We have already procured them that at least for one month we need 20,000. But we are having that stock at the uh, medical supply division. Uh, next week, that our uh, consignment will be coming. Most probably somewhere around Wednesday or Thursday, uh, the first consignment from Thailand will be coming about 3,000. So they will supply that uh, regularly. They stop eating because we have ordered about 15,000. Yeah, there won't be any problem. And now to have a look at a roundup of court proceedings. Former senior DI Jean Rusenanaika, who was arrested and remanded for concealing information in connection with the murder of a national rugby player Wasim Tajuddin, was granted bail today. He was granted bail by the Colombo High Court following a request by his legal counsel. Former senior DIG Anur Rasenanayake was remanded by the Criminal Investigations Department on the 23rd of May 2016. He was in the remand custody for more than a year and was released on a cash bail of 1 million rupees and a 3 surety bail of 5 million rupees each. He was banned from foreign travel and was ordered to surrender his passport to the court. In addition, the court ordered former senior DIG Senanayake to appear before the court every Sunday morning. However, as the High Court order has not been presented before the Colombo Magistrate Court, former senior DIG Anur Rasenanayake was unable to grant bail today. Meanwhile, the Colombo High Court has permitted parliamentarian Uday Gamman Pillar to travel overseas. The parliamentarian, however, will also have to seek the consent of the number two Colombo High Court when travelling overseas due to another case currently in process. Colombo Additional District Judge Chamak Madanayaka today allowed to proceed with the case filed by parliamentarian Namal Rajapaksa against the OIC of the FCID and another officer seeking 200 million rupees in compensation. The parliamentarian accuses the duo of remanding him under false accusations devoid of a proper investigation. It relates to investigations into the allegation where the parliamentarian misappropriated 70 million rupees after the funds were obtained from Indian company Krish Lanka. Meanwhile, the traffic OIC of Borella police station was remanded until the 7th of June over allegations of theft. The order was issued by the Colombo chief magistrate. 
With the increasing number of cases of violence against children in the country, the National Partnership to End Violence Against Children was launched at the Deepani Mahavidyal in Anuradhapura today. The program was launched by the National Child Protection Authority as a collaborative partnership between the government, UN agencies, international organizations, civil societies, media, private sector and other key stakeholders. According to the latest data released by the National Child Protection Authority, children in Sri Lanka are exposed to multiple forms of violence in their homes, schools, online and in their communities, with over 9,000 instances of violence involving children in 2016. As one of the 12 pathfinding countries, Sri Lanka is taking lead globally to end violence including abuse, neglect and exploitation against children by 2030. This commitment is a part of the Global Partnership to End Violence Against Children and supports the country's drive to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. The event was held with the participation of representatives of local and foreign partner organizations and they signed a declaration of commitment to the National Partnership to End Violence Against Children in Sri Lanka. Last year alone in Sri Lanka, 9,000 instances of serious violence involving children were reported to the National Child Protection Authority. And yet we all know that many more cases go unreported. We must ensure that justice is served quickly and delays are minimized for children and young people who have been subjected to violence. According to police data, there were 10,593 cases of rape between 2010 and 2015, of which the Three quarters were statutory rape cases. The growing tourism industry in Sri Lanka, following the end of the civil conflict, brings with it a renewed set of risks for children in the tourism context. Amendments to the orphanage audience have, been, have also been drafted and are being reviewed by the Attorney General's Department and Provincial Probation Commissioners. More recently, our government is considering proposals to include a Bill of Rights in the Constitution that may include a specific clause on child rights and child protection system. Currently, the Ministry of Women and Child Affairs is drafting new policy documents on child protection, family care and alternative care. Business news is on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Welcome back everyone. Here is Imesh Fernando with the daily market update. The benchmark all share price index lost 4.61 points to close at 6,689.07, while the SP Sri Lanka 20 index gained 9.11 points to close at 3,842.45. The turnover was 523.82 million rupees, with 55.8 million shares changed in hands in 6,845 trades. The market capitalization at the end of the day was 2,960.6 billion rupees. Top 5 gainers of the day were Brown's Capital, Citrus Calpitia, SNB Leasing, Brown's Investments and Brown's Beach Hotel. While the top 5 losers were Kalamazoo Systems, Taprobin Holdings, Namunukuli Plantation, Raikam Sultans and Lucky Lanka non-voting. Today's foreign purchases were 97.07 million rupees and foreign sales were 30.5 million rupees. And there were no crossings today. For a detailed picture of how the markets performed during the week, here is Opul Athapathu from NDP Securities with our weekly review. We are edged down 0.1% during the week, mainly due to price losses in counters such as Carson Cumberbatch, Lanka Odex Leasing Company and Dialog Garciata. However, S&P SL20 which represent the blue chip counters gained 0.4% for the week. This was mainly due to price gains in Hamas Holdings, John Kills Holdings and Hatton National Bank. Meanwhile, the average daily turnover was down from last week to 827 million rupees. Banks, finance and insurance sector recorded the highest sector turnover during the week, whilst the second highest was seen in the diversified sector. Total foreign activity was at subdued level during this week, where foreign turnover accounted only for 16% of the total weekly turnover. Foreigners closed as net buyers for the week, creating a net foreign inflow of 142 million rupees. Total year-to-date net foreign inflow at the end of this week amounted to 18.9 billion rupees. Out of the weekly turnover, blocked rates accounted for 48%, which was a lower proportion than last week. 
Before taking a look at the currency rates, a bit of international business news. Russia has signed an agreement with the Indian government to build two new reactors for the Kandukulam nuclear power station in Tamil Nadu, adding that it would loan India 4.2 billion US dollars to help fund construction. The deal was reached amid wide-ranging talks held in St. Petersburg yesterday between Russian President Vladimir Putin and visiting Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Modi stated that finalization of the nuclear agreement would further deepen cooperation in civil nuclear energy between the two countries. During the meeting, the two countries also agreed to set up joint ventures for manufacturing aircraft and automobiles. Russia added that it was preparing to supply anti-aircraft missile systems to India and both governments are discussing the terms. And now here's a look at Sri Lankan rupee traded against other currencies during the day today. On to sports now, national records were tumbled at the Diagama Mahindra Rajapaksa Stadium on the first day of the second national trial, which finalizes the squad for the Asian Athletic Championship, which will be held in India from 1st of July. Sharif Kapukotwa batted at the, his own national uh, record in the men's shot putt with a distance of 17.55 meters to clinch the top spot. Ishara Sandarwan and Anita Jagadishwaran vaulted new heights as Ishara cleared a distance of 5.11 meters while Anita renewed her own national record in the women's pole vault with a performance of 3.46 meters. Many promising performances were shown on the track as the fastest 100 meters dash was witnessed at Diagama was Vinoj Suranjan sprinting a time of 10.3 seconds in the men's 100 meters heats. Ramesh Ratnaga topped the women's 100 meter event setting a co uh, time code of 11.74 seconds. Bit of cricket winning the toss, New Zealand elected to bat in the second cricketing encounter of the Champions Trophy 2017. After a 40-run 40, 40 partnership, Guptil fell for 26 despite rain interruptions. Ken Williamson and Luke Ronchi put on a steady partnership of 77 runs. Luke Ronchi was dismissed for, by John Hastings for 65 runs. Playing a brilliant knock, Ken Williamson scored a century from 97 deliveries. Ross Taylor scored 46 of 58, while few other players reached the two-figure mark, putting up 291 in 45 overs. Australians John Hastings picked up two wickets for 69 runs. Rain, however, could not stay away, and Australia's chase is yet to get underway. Well, there it is. 100 for Kane Williamson, the New Zealand skipper. We had 100 from Joe. International news is on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Moving on to international news, U.S. President Donald Trump has announced that the U.S. is withdrawing from the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate Change, making good on one of his major as well as most controversial campaign promises. Although Trump said that moves to negotiate a new deal in favor of U.S. businesses and workers would begin, the leaders of France, Germany and Italy issued a joint statement rejecting a renegotiation. The 2015 Paris Agreement committed nations to reduce global temperatures and limit emissions of greenhouse gases and enabled rich countries to provide financial aid for poorer nations to take climate action. U.S. President Donald Trump, however, alleges that the agreement favors rival economies such as China and India. We don't want other leaders and other countries laughing at us anymore. I was elected to represent the citizens of Pittsburgh, not Paris. Here's Katharina Chang from the Weather Center with the weather. Thank you, Mahesh. Now, showers can be expected in the western Sabraga, more southern, central and northwestern provinces in the next 24 hours. Thunder showers may also occur in the eastern Uva, north central provinces and in the Vaunia district 
particularly in the afternoon. Fairly strong winds about 50 km per hour can be expected during these showers. Temperatures are to vary between 24 to 37 degrees Celsius, with Kamuna expected to reach 37 degrees Celsius. That's it from the Weather Centre. Let us now take a quick look at the City by City forecast. And that is a part of your world tonight right here on Other Than 24-7. I'm Mahesh Johnny. Our weekend edition of News at 9 will return tomorrow with Indi Variyamuatha. Be sure to join us then. And as usual tonight, we want to take you to Kandy and to the hollowed prisons of the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic. Kandy is known as the last capital of the ancient king Zira of Sri Lanka. The city lies in the midst of the hills in the Kandy Plateau, which crosses an area of tropical plantation, mainly tea. Thank you for joining us. Good night. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Adhaverana 24-7.